Next on the couch with me is Greg Canty, who is managing partner of Fusion Communications, PR and marketing, marketing <laughs> and graphic design yeah. and everything to do with communications, yeah. basically. Fusion Communications. So You're very that's welcome. That's what we say to wrap it all together. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're very welcome, Greg. Thank, Thank you, so you very much for coming in. Yeah, thanks for having me. So tell me a bit about your business. What's the day in the life for Greg Canty? Oh, wow. Well, do you know, it's kind of weird for me because I started off life on the South Mall in 1982 mm -hmm. as an accountant. And we're back in the South Mall because we're in Dublin as well. And years ago, you know, as an accountant, you're dealing with lots of different clients. It's exactly the same now. Mm -hmm. But the only difference I would say as an accountant, what you used to was tell a story in arrears for a client. And now what we're doing is kind of we're making those stories. And that could be on press releases, it could be on websites, it could be on newsletters, it could be on social media. So we're always in the business of storytelling, that's what I kind of say to people. Mm -hmm. So you're in the middle of the story, you're creating stories, sometimes you might be trying to control a story or block a story for a client if something has gone wrong a little bit. Yeah. So it's, a, it's yeah. a brilliant, brilliant job. And from one day to the next, you have no idea what's going to happen. Uh, the, the accounting thing actually is very interesting because you, especially during the recession and look before it and everything, uh, you, you'd have found that like, the, the, the person who manages the money is the person who manages the business. But it's a fantastic insight for you to have and then looking after somebody's PR yeah. as well. Yeah, and, 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 and it's kind of weird. I've got a, an unusual kind of perspective on it. Mm -hmm. You know, because of course during the recession, and, and I think um, Eva from Chamber was chatting earlier about training was the first thing that got cut. Mm -hmm. and, and you can imagine what happened to marketing and advertising and PR and all of those things. But it's the only activity in a business that's actually positive. It's the only money that someone will spend to get the wheels to turn and to encourage more business to, to come in. So what actually happened, and it made no sense that people cut out all of that stuff. So of course when it cut out, what happened was businesses started kind of going backwards and eroding a little bit. Mm -hmm. So at least I, I'm able to have a business conversation with our clients. And that's why I think it's a good advantage to me and the business. It's I a very good yeah, strength, yeah. yeah. It really is good, it really is good. Yeah, yeah, so yeah definitely. They, they trust me a little bit more. They do, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, but, but I'm always trying to find value for a client. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. And, yeah, I know how tough money is, how hard it is to make it and to hold on yeah. to it. So we're never going to waste money for anyone. If I think yeah. you know, a particular direction is right for them, you know, makes financial sense that that's the way. Uh, we're never going to see them wrong in that way. Yeah, but in, in all honesty, like you're 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 a communications company or a PR company, like an, an awful lot of small to medium sized enterprises and businesses, they would see that uh, you know they wouldn't have much of a spend, they wouldn't have much of a budget. Uh, sure, they'd set up a business page on Facebook and just yeah. that'd be grand. Yeah. Cut out the middleman. They, you know, if they have a bit extra to spend, they might go to, you know, directly to the radio station, directly to the newspaper. What's the advantage of going to a communications company? Um, do you know we're the professionals at this, and, and you know, and not to trying to blow our own trumpets or anything, but we do this day in day out for clients across all the sectors. Mm -hmm. You know, so you're going to do the right things for them. And sometimes, being really honest, you know, a, a client will come to us, we'll know immediately, you don't have money for some of this stuff, but we'll set them right. You know, we'll always say, you know, it, it don't write a check to make yourself look bad. Make sure you get the basics okay, like getting your website right, your logos right. If you are going to do the whole social media thing, make sure they're set up right. You know, come to a training program, and we do some of those now with the local enterprise office, we're fantastic at, you know, helping those startups as well. Even Chamber, you heard that, you mm -hmm. know, they run a lot of courses and stuff. Yeah. So we're all for it. Just do the right things. And when you are of a scale and you can afford to come to an agency, mm -hmm. we'll take you then and bring it to, to the next level. Um, sometimes for the small business, we'll actually help them to get up and running for themselves. You know, we do little mini plans with them and just get them from one place to the next, mm -hmm. kind of, you know, but safely. But, it w w but we're always for, you know, just do the right things and don't waste money because you know, th that money is hard to come by, so do the right things with yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. And go yeah, back yeah. to the accountant thing yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm telling yeah. you. Um, now, the, the, the other thing is like kind of like budgets. Um, you'd have a company that might have three grand to spend, or you have a company that has 500 euros to spend. Can you cater to both those needs? Yeah, no, uh, OK. So the, the, the one thing, and I suppose during the recession, it, it was kind of amazing because the, the recession and social media actually came at exactly the right th time. Mm -hmm. and what I was able to say to everyone, you know, no matter who you are, you can actually promote your business. 
you know, every day tweet something, put something out on Facebook, do something on LinkedIn, reach out to other people. And you, and you don't, you, you, okay, you actually need money now, you know, a lot more than what you needed before. But at least you could always do something positive for your business. When I talk about positive costs, what I mean is just dedicating some of your time into pushing something out. Mm -hmm. Anyone can do it in the business. You know, oh my God, we don't have time. And like, hold on. You know, you're trying to promote your business and tell people that story. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't always kind of require a big budget or anything like that, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now you run the company with your wife, I Deirdre. Do. Yeah. What's it like working with your wife? Um, that, no, be, being really honest, it's really good. And I'd say a few things about it. First of all, you know, it does kind of put pressure on a relationship in, in one respect because you're with them the whole time. Yeah. You know, and a work stress will kind of go into a personal stress. You know, so at the end of a long day, you know, you're still together. And I think it, it does, probably does cost you a little bit in that respect. Um, in terms of the work environment, it's kind of an advantage then because you both have the same agenda. You both mm -hmm. have the same objective. So there's no case of, oh, God, you know, what were you doing till this time today? Because you both know why you're doing something. Yeah. You know, that there's a, like a clear agenda and everything else. That, like, and in terms of kind of finding a partner, the one thing I would say to anyone is that, like any other partnership, you're in that business for the skill set that the other person has and how well you gel together. Mm -hmm. So it's nearly like the business side of it first. And, and the relationship is kind of a bonus in many respects. And there's no point doing something with a partner if the skill set isn't there. Yeah. And like, I'm really lucky to work with Dee. She's really, really skilled at what she does. And as an accountant, I suppose I spotted that at an early stage. Mm -hmm. saying, oh my God, she's a good businesswoman, I think. And she's working on interesting things and I wouldn't mind kind of like joining in there and bringing what I had to the party, you know? Cause yeah. Yeah, so it, it really works well. But it's not without its stresses like everything yeah. else at the same time, you know? Jeez, when you, when you put it that way, it actually, yeah, yeah. like, it, it, it makes perfect sense, really, yeah, doesn't it? Not too bad. Uh, yeah. Now, you've got, you've uh, the main headquarters in Cork, but it's also, you're also based in Dublin as well. Yeah, we, we have an office in both places. Yeah. Now, and how we kind of grew our business was started working from home, then we took an office back in the South Mill, mm -hmm. um, and then a few years later, because a, a lot of clients want that national presence. Um, so we opened an office in Dublin. So Absolutely. my 7 spend half our working week every week in Dublin, but we live in Cork. You must be um, right. Uh, yeah, but uh, it, for me, it's energy. You, we have, and it's like going into two different jobs mm -hmm. every week. You know, you've got your, you go through the Dublin door and you go through the Cork door. Yeah. And it's a new energy and different people and all of that stuff. So I, I kind of thrive in that end and that's, that, that's, a, that's a good thing. Yeah. yeah. You will, you will be tired. We miss the dogs. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah you have yeah. dogs at home? We have two little dogs, Honey and Bert. And what kind of dogs are they? Uh, yeah, two little rescue dogs, totally oh, different. Lovely. Yeah. yeah we, we, we always say Honey is a little sweetheart, and if she was a person, she'd be shopping in BT the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Bert is a little scumbag. He'll be out selling termite. <laughs> yeah. So the <laughs> yeah, they're the two dogs. And so, do you think that it was the fact that you and your wife started the business from scratch, yourself and Deirdre Waldron? Yeah. That you, the fact that you started the business from scratch, that you you built it together, that maybe that's how it became an effective business. The fact yeah. that the two of you work so well together and. Yeah. Well, well she had started it, and she, she was up and running um, for a few years. Okay. And uh, well, she started in 2000. Ah, okay. And I kind of started doing a project with her kind of shortly after that. I continued working for about two years and then I joined her full time. That was Catwalk. Yeah, exactly. And that Tell was us a little bit about Catwalk. Well, th okay, so Dee was the marketing director of the Rosa Trilly ah. um, for a few years. So they would, you know, that was a mad event. And one of the big highlights of that was a fashion show, mm -hmm. all the top models. And of course, down in Kerry, everyone was jumping over each other trying to get tickets for this thing. So, of course, I'm the businessman, and I was down there thinking, yeah, we don't have anything like that in Cork and what have you. So it was actually like half three in the morning. I kind of woke up and couldn't, couldn't sleep, and I had this stupid idea. So I woke up saying, OK, I have an idea. Will we do this thing? So a, a few months later, we had this little formula set up whereby we take this event and tour around the country with the top Irish models, um, top Irish fashion, mm -hmm. beauty, and we, we, so we took that around on tour for six locations around the country. We lost money the first time. We were working with each other mm -hmm. really, really close quarters. 
Um, can you imagine just like, you know, less than a year into a relationship? Yeah. We kind of got by and, and it's amazing from a business point of view, really, really quickly, we kind of found roles for each other that were complementary. You know, so we'd go to a venue for the sake of argument, just like what you're doing here now, setting things up. Yeah. Everyone knew instinctively what each person was doing. Yeah, and we slotted in. And, you know, even you know, when the events were done, even stuff like credit control and pitching to sponsors for the next thing. Like, ironically, I used to end up dealing with all the boutiques in the country. So there was a period of time where I knew every fashion boutique, <laughs> the length yeah. and breadth of the country. We'd go in the door and I'd know what labels they were kind of like carrying and who their suppliers were and all that kind of thing. But we just kind of grew that. So what happened was, God am I, is a really long story, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> You're yeah. so, so well I'm just thinking, what an amazing husband. Yeah, you yeah. know, every boutique yeah. in the store. I know, that was good. <laughs> that was a really good thing. And um, yeah, so we, we did that for a few years. Yeah. And as part of that, in order for the event to live and breathe, we had to get loads of PR for it. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the clients that were kind of sponsors, they used to come to us then after saying, my God, we're thrilled with the PR. Which kind of, if you can imagine, that led to the kind of fusion thing rocking in. So a lot of the clients we had came to us directly as PR clients. And we ended up doing work for a hotel that we used to bring the event to. We, we ended up doing a lot of work in Killarney where we used to take the events. Yeah. We ended up doing work for a golf club there and it just built and built and built. It just grows from and there. Yeah, so it was just my 7D and then mm. we added more and more to the team. So there's 14 of us now. Wow. In Dublin and Cork and it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's cool and it's re really good. And you've yeah. got a very strong team. You have Gina London who I had the pleasure yeah. of interviewing a few weeks ago and um, uh, I noticed as well on, the, on your website one... Uh, aspect of your business that intrigues me is crisis PR. Yeah. Can you tell me what kind of businesses have you worked with and what kind of crises do you deal with? Okay, um, yeah, my God, th th this is, well, okay, we've had everything from uh, someone being found dead in a hotel. Oh. Yeah, on a, on a, on a Sunday and oh. having to deal with that. And it was a young person. And I I if you think about it, you know, this is kind of saving a business time. You know, something mm -hmm. bad has happened. Um, you know, and you have to knee-jerk react. Oh yeah, totally. And, and uh, you need to be really, really flexible. So, like a, a lot of the time with PR, you're chasing the media, saying, "Listen, we have a great story here. Could we get it covered on one of your radio shows or going to the newspaper?" In this situation, it's the absolute reverse. You know, the media are chasing the hotel in that instance. What the hell is going on? Are people safe? How could this have happened? So you're there and you're trying to feed the hungry media. Um, you're trying to- Write the perfect press release. Yeah, salvage the reputation for, yeah. the, the, for, for the business or the hotel or whatever, and make sure at the end of it that, that, they're, gonna, that they're still living and breathing and they have a business. Um, it's really interesting as well because they got solicitors involved because in cases like that, there could be you know, people being sued or whatever. So sometimes that, you, know, you might be trying to say one thing from a media point of view, but the solicitors are saying, there's no way on earth you can say anything like that, so you have to be really mm -hmm. careful. And then there's th just the kind of customer side of it, you know, people with weddings and, yes. you know, uh, managing all of that stuff. So that, that, that was one really interesting one. Um, and and, and w what's amazing with that is it's not static, it's live. Mm -hmm. You know, you might, and before, and that, that's even changed because you might say, well, we've got a story and that'll get us to tomorrow. But no, you, you have a story and that'll get you to the next tweet. You know, so everyone is just kind of like on top of you straight away. Like if you think, like even over the weekend, we had the big storm with George Hook. Yes. You know, and that's blowing up and say, okay, what would you do in that scenario? You know, what would you do in that scenario if you were the, the sponsor on the show? What do you do in that scenario if you're George Hook? Yeah. And, like and what do you think about that? Because that hotel pulled out, uh, the it was a... Clayton Hotel pulled yeah, out the of? Yeah, the latter group or whatever. The latter well, group, yeah. yeah. Um, you, you need to assess it from their point of view. Um, mm. You know, like obviously the good reason in the first yeah. place for sponsoring Which a, I, a show I with him. And you kind of want yeah. he's a particular character. What we always try to do in it is that my kind of motto is there's opportunities in a crisis. So, uh, okay, so just yeah. say something terrible has happened to our business and the media are chasing you for a story. Well, if you've run a good business, you've been doing good things the whole time. And wh what that kind of means, okay, so if you've, you know, if you've invested a lot in your hotel, you know, if, you, if you've had a very good health and safety record, 
if you had a great team spirit, if your team had been, been there with you for a long time, when you're trying to deal with the issue, you're trying to build all these stories into it so that people are kind of saying, well, they're actually a really good business and mm -hmm. you know, you're trying to get all the good stuff because every story blows over. And once That's the story blows over, yeah, once the story blows over, no one is interested in all those other things. Yeah. So, as so you're in trying a to way, combat, the yeah. George Hook story is probably going to give Delata Group a boost in that they didn't want to be associated with what George Hook said. Yeah, possibly. Exactly, possibly. Yeah. And, and th th they just need to play with that. And, and do. But it's fluid. That's an interesting perspective. You know, and, and there's no right or wrong with it. You need to call it. Mm. You know, how is this going to play for me? And you go, yeah. And, and that's instinct and trust and, you know, and working with a team and all that kind of thing. And we've had data breaches, you know, th 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 that's another scenario we, we, we've dealt with. Um, we've had places with you know, in inappropriate stuff and crashes that have happened. And, you know, and people go into the media about, oh, you know, yeah. And, and of course, you've got a business owner then who's trying to just keep their business going because yeah. something terrible has happened. Um, then that kind of brings into question, like, you know, kind of, you, 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 would you kind of end up in situations where you've been approached to sort out a situation, sort out, you know, come in with, you know, and help with crisis PR, yeah. but your ethics or morals might be called into question, like, you know, that you, for example, a crash, that you know that they might have done something, on, you know, yeah. not right with the child. I yeah. suppose you just have no, to kind of yeah, stay no, professional. You're, you're, but you're, you're absolutely, absolutely right. And we had one scenario now last year where someone approached us for help and our own team were kind of saying to us, this stinks, we don't want to be near it or associated with it mm -hmm. in any way. Now, the one thing, you know, our name isn't going to be at the bottom of any press release or anything yeah. like that. Um, but what we'll always do in those scenarios is, you know, maybe someone has been wronged. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe someone's got the wrong end of the stick. And you know, and with media, with social media, something can, can blow up really quickly. That's bad for someone. So in those scenarios, we'll try and be fair and get to the bottom of the story and say, hold on, if you're offering, offering a crisis pure service, that's what it is. And sometimes that is going to be yeah. something that might not be very palatable or nice. Yeah. But you try to be fair and... And fair it's about scenario, changing yeah. the perspective from like a terrible situation yeah. to understanding the situation. It might not necessarily yeah. be uh, like that they're great, but that you're making it, uh, you know. Yeah, and, and, and uh, we genuinely try and get to the, the, the truth and all of these things and get mm -hmm. whoever's involved to kind of, okay, well, what is it? And often people are really sorry quickly and I think sorry is a powerful word. And just to get to that place quickly with honesty mm -hmm. and then start rebuilding again, you know. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing we always say to clients, though, is that a lot of the, 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 the best preparation for a crisis is to build your reputation in the first place. So do good PR, have a good regime about you know, publicizing the things that you're good at. So if, so, if a, an ill wind blows in, mm -hmm. people say, oh, no, hold on, they're actually a really good company or a good organization. So you know, don't be treating them too harshly. So at least that kind of protects yeah. you and then you can deal with the other things, you know. Colgate ads yeah, brings yeah. to mind. Prevention yeah. is better than yeah, cure. Yeah, there you go, Colgate, exactly. <laughs> Colgate PR. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I'd yeah. like a PR yeah, company yeah. like yeah, that with exactly. that name. That's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Yeah. That's perfect, yeah. Greg. I